Okay, Jordan, we'll start with Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Jordan, hey, just explain the, the uh, offensive explosion, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, where's this in offense come from? Uh, not that you hadn't been scoring before, but it, it's really jumped up lately. Um, you know, a lot of it is to be, you know, attributed to the fact that, once again, I know it's we're being a dead horse talking about not having two bigs uh, constantly in the lineup with Oscar and Derek and now just Derek. Um, but that gives us the opportunity to run uh, four out, one in, um, more ball screen related offense, which, I mean, if you watch any basketball at any level at this day and age, it's, it's ball screen dominated. Um, you, need to, you need to have guards and bigs who know how to run that, uh, that style of play. Um, and Hug saw an opportunity when we lost Oscar to kind of add that to our, our repertoire, which we've never had an opportunity to do, at least since I've been here. Uh, we've been a really, you know, uh, low post, uh, high low, um, extremely physically dominated offensive team. And now uh, things are a little bit more open, uh, gives guys a chance to to make different plays. And it makes sense. I mean, with our lineup, uh, we go down with uh, probably six to seven different guards who can make a play at any given time. Next is Kevin Kinder. Hey, Jordan, I'll take that lead in from Mess. Um, can you describe the testing process, what you do when you go in, how it goes, how much of a pain is it? Does it bother you? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a pain, but Hug said yesterday, we either do this or we don't play. So you test three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, you got to have three tests um, every single week in order to be eligible to play uh, in any NCAA game. Uh, I'm praying personally that that this uh, doesn't last forever. I hope that, uh, you know, I think there's a reevaluation period after this season. Uh, we got to do what we got to do, especially right now where there was so many, you know, unknowns with the virus and stuff coming into the season. So when they came out and said, look, it's not ideal, but three times a week gives us the opportunity to be, you know, absolutely certain that we're not we're not a part of the spread um, as much as we possibly can be. Um, so you do that this year, and then I think, uh, you know, it'd be pre pretty wise to sit down next year as a, you know, NCAA and as a committee and say, is there any way we can, you know, roll some of this stuff back a little bit and, and try to get back to normalcy? Because I go down to Texas Tech, and I know this isn't, you know, testing related, uh, but, you know, we're in uh, Lubbock, and I don't know how many fans they had in there, but it, it finally felt like a real basketball game again. And to be honest, it was the most fun game of the season. And one follow-up, is there a little bit of nervousness for you when you take the test? Oh, man, am I going to come back positive? Um, you know, maybe maybe early on, but to be honest, A, I've had it. Um, I'm not a scientist, and I, I don't know if I can get it again, but it seems like it's unlikely. Um, and I don't do anything. We don't do anything. So uh, we tend to stay in our apartments, hang out as a team. Um, we've been extremely close-knit um, this season, and that's helped on and off the court. So no, not really anymore. Uh, I test and pretty much assume that, that I'm good to go. Let's go to Justin Jackson. Hey, Jordan, uh, looking at Oklahoma, obviously uh, Manic, uh, their big is a, a different kind of big uh, than what Derek is. But other than that, it seems like the way you guys are playing now offensively is very similar to what Oklahoma does offensively. Do you, do you also see a lot of similarities there between the two schools? I mean, I see similarities across the board in, in college basketball, but when you look at us versus Oklahoma, uh, you hit it on the head. Brady Manick makes them extremely versatile. Having a stretch five or even a stretch four is almost pivotal, you know, in, in college basketball. Now, we can kind of get away with not having that as much. You could say Emmett and JB are kind of our stretch four. We don't have a five like Manick who can step out and shoot, you know, threes, even though I think if you gave Derek the chance, he probably would like to get a few up. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Derek, uh, Derek understands the difference between him and Manic. He knows where his advantage is and that's in the low post. And defensively, he knows that his job for us is to, you know, contain the ball screen action, but then get back to Manic because they run a hell of a lot of pick and pops. Um, I remember watching Trey Young's freshman year and uh, noticing that, man, I think Manic is really the guy who makes them tick. So uh, that's gonna be the guy that we try to key in uh, focus on stopping 
I think when, when he struggles, their team struggles. Go ahead, Keenan Cummings. Jordan, you mentioned this, the change in offensive style. Did you see this coming, you know, when Oscar left? I mean, did you see this change coming? And do you enjoy this style of basketball more? Uh, I personally enjoy it more. Uh, being an undersized guard uh, gives me a little bit more freedom to, you know, come off of ball screens and make reads, which is what I've been, you know, taught my whole life. Um, same thing with Deuce. Being the quarterback that he is, he sees the floor in similar ways. We actually laugh a lot of times during practice when uh, we might see something as we're standing off to the side and, and uh, the others in a ball screen action. And, you know, we see things very similarly. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I necessarily saw it coming. When Oscar left, I knew uh, change was probably gonna have to happen, but I didn't know if we were gonna be willing as a, as a program and staff to do that mid season. It's not easy, um, but all credit to uh, Hugs and Harrison and Martin and Everhart and the entire staff for being like, look, we were kind of forced um, into a hand of change right now. And they did a great job at doing it, implementing a, a four out style ball screen offense. Back to Greg Hunter. So Jordan, you mentioned that you guys just sort of hang out together. Do you miss being a normal college student and being able to do what college students do? Um, I don't know if miss it is necessarily the right term. Uh, this is just, it, it kind of comes down to a really simple, uh, simple question you ask yourself. Do you want to play basketball? Do you want to be able to play in the big 12 tournament in the NCAA tournament, uh, which we were robbed of last year. Do you want that opportunity? If the answer is yes, which for our entire team, uh, it is yes, then you have to give up some things. We've always, as athletes, had to sacrifice certain things. Um, but yeah, I think uh, once this season's over, I might uh, take a little time to try to be, quote unquote, a little bit more normal of a student for a short time. It'd be nice to have some social interaction in a safe way. Next is Ryan Pritt. Hey, Jordan. You know, it was only a couple of weeks. It's easy to forget that, that Coach Huggs was on here kind of talking about things like effort and caring in terms of your guys' your guys' defensive efforts. And obviously, winning alleviates a lot of things, and I think we could all agree you've been better the last couple games. But, you know, in your opinion, was it a matter of effort and caring? And if it was, what was kind of the tipping point for you guys over the last couple of weeks? Um, you know, whether I think it was, uh, um, you know, a case of effort doesn't really matter. If you ask any any player at any time, whether or not they you think, you know, are you given enough effort, a player is going to tell you yes. But what a Hall of Fame coach does is finds ways to get his team to a higher level than what they're at right now or wherever that point is. Even, I mean, I'll be real blunt and honest. Yesterday's practice was uh, a little bit of a, a slaughter in terms of, uh, making sure we're not complacent. I think um, it seemed as though the, the staff was focused on making sure that we knew that this wasn't, you know, our peak. You know, beating a, a good Texas Tech team on the road is great. Um, but yesterday was kind of a reset button. Uh, you have to do it sometimes after a loss, which I think after Florida hugs did. Um, and then you have to find times to do it after wins too. And it's just a testament to how good of a coach he is. Um, do you love it as a player? No, it's not a not a fun practice. Uh, like yesterday, you didn't come out of there and be like, hey, this is extremely enjoyable. Uh, but you, uh, as a competitor, and I think certain guys on this team align with that mentality, you realize that that it's needed. Um, sometimes, yeah, public might not understand why he, you know, kind of rips us a new one every now and then, but it, it makes sense because winning makes sense. Mike Kazaza. Hey, Jordan, for, um, I don't know, for a while now, Oklahoma's had some success offensively, you know, good numbers for shooting and scoring. And you know, the personnel hasn't changed too much on either side, a little bit, but not too much. Any any common thread there that you see that explains you know, the, that they've kind of done some things that other teams haven't done for as long as they have? Can, can you repeat that one more time? Sorry, there's something over here. They're cleaning the floor. I couldn't really hear you, Mike. Yeah, um, just – their success over the past, I don't know, season or so, maybe two seasons where, you know, the key personnel on both sides changed a little bit, not a lot, but anything common to those, you know, good shooting performances, good scoring games that you've, you've singled out? 
Um, you know, I kind of touched on earlier. Manic Manic makes them tick. Reeves is extremely good. They they tend to be a team that doesn't um, they don't play where you seem, you know, you don't see them where they have like a lot of pressure. Uh, they play in a really free system, uh, and uh, Coach Kruger's got them. Um, he's had that going for as long as I can remember watching OU basketball. Um, he's he lets them go. He gives them a lot of freedom. And with teams who have a lot of freedom, it can be dangerous uh, because it allows players to kind of, you know, get to their spots and do what they want um, kind of at will. Uh, but our goal as a team is to try to take advantage of that freedom and maybe speed them up into making decisions that they're not used to making at speeds uh, that they're not used to playing at. Back to Justin. Hey, Jordan, um, kind of going back to this battle with the fives again here. Uh, the first meeting against Oklahoma this year, it seemed like they were able to really kind of frustrate Derek, uh, you know, whether it was with double teams or maybe just, you know, chirping in his ear or, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it happens. It's a ball game. Um, what kind of stuff did you, did you, you know, see or remember from that first game? And, and, you know, do you expect, Derek to kind of, you know, rebound and, and, and play better the second time around against them? Um, well, the way the way I look at it is we played OU our third game of the season um, and of the Big 12 season, at least. Right. And he just wasn't as used to or comfortable, which nobody is uh, in college basketball, getting double teams sent his way. Uh, but when you're you're an All-American, that, you know, is going to happen, especially in the low post. Uh, so what I've noticed is is how good Derek's been in terms of listening and adapting to being a double team big uh, in the Big 12. And the reason he's so good at what he's doing right now in terms of looking out and being able to kick it, spraying the ball from the low post to the opposite wings um, is because that's what our coaches have preached to him for, I mean, months and months now. They told him from the start, look, Derek, you're in a position now where it's not just about your ability to score, but it's your ability to play make and score through two guys sometimes. And, and that's what he's been really, really good at uh, as of late. So I'm not worried about his uh, ability to, to understand what's coming tomorrow night um, or be able to perform in it. He'll, he'll be just fine. All right, Jordan, we're turning you loose. Thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.